hello again uh, in this video we will start uh, with chapter zero chapter zero has four sections as you see uh, today we will uh, deal with the first section about random number generation generation okay so the purpose of this chapter actually is to learn the basic mechanisms for generating or simulating random variables on a computer. How can we imitate or simulate, for example, the roll of a, of a die, of a dice? Or generate a normal random distribution on a computer? Uh, all these things are based on uh, the core notion of random number generation. So the ability of generating uniform random numbers which are uniformly distributed on the interval 0, 1. If you know how to do that, then we shall learn in section 0 0.3 later how to generate other distributions from the uniform distribution on 0, 1. Okay? So, by a random number, we mean the value of a random variable uniformly distributed on zero. Now, there are many algorithms to generate such random numbers, and I will explain today the simplest uh, rudimentary, uh, if you like, algorithm. It's called the linear congruential generator. Okay? Let me explain what, what is, it is. Choose positive integers, ACM, given. They are the constants or the parameters of the generator. And now, what do we do? How do we generate a random number between 0 and 1? We start, we should start with an initial integer called the seed of the generator. Okay? And then we iterate. If we know x0, what do we do? How do we compute x1? We multiply x0 by a, the, our parameters, at c, and then take the remainder of the division by m. Okay? And now the, the, the xn are actually numbers between uh, 0 and 1. Uh, actually, between 0 and m minus 1. So when we divide by m, we get the random number. <coughs> Okay. Let me explain this on a simple example just to understand what's happening. But it's a bad example because it's not, you will see why it's bad, but why, why do we need to start with a bad example? Before, because, we can, because we can understand uh, more clearly what's happening here. So take small numbers actually. Take, for example, a equal 5 c equal 9, m equal 7. These are the parameters of our generator. Start with an initial seed of 4, for example. If we apply, if we apply this formula, so take n equals 0, what do we get? How do you compute x1? Just apply. 5 times 4 plus 9 is 29. Divided by 7, what do we get? You, you get 4, and the remainder, yes, you get 4 times 7 is 28, sorry, the remainder is 1. If you divide 29 by 7, the remainder is 1. And now we divide, this is x1. Now x1, okay, so if we divide by m, which is 7, we get our first random generator, which is 1 over 7. Okay, very good. And now we reiterate. We take n equal 1, so we get x2. Multiply the previous result by 5, any you know, 1, multiply 1 by 5 and add 9, and divide by 7. Now, the result is 14 divided by 7, so the remainder of 14 divided by 7 is 0. And so, when we divide by 7, we get our next random number, which is 0. And we repeat this. Take n equal 2, multiply the previous number by 5, add 9, and take the remainder of the division by 7, we get 2. Divide by 7, our third number generate uh, number is 2 over 7. Okay, next step, same thing. 
x4 equal 5 and the number the random number is 5 over 7. Next step, same thing. x5 equals 6. And so the fifth number, uh, random number, is 6 over 7. And the last step, we get x6 equal 4. So what do we have here? We started from 4 and we ended in 4. Okay. Meanwhile, we generated six random num uh, random numbers. Okay. Now you tell me that there are not uh, there's nothing random here. It's true. There's nothing random here. But this is why I'm I'm calling it a bad example. But this is just to illustrate the mechanism of uh, a basic model for generating random numbers. So the first observation is that the sequence is periodic. But this is not just a particularity of this case. Even if I take a big numbers, I'll get the same thing. So, uh, so this, our first information uh, uh, observation is that this algorithm imitates randomness very badly. So it's not a good random number generator. But at least we understood how does it work. Now, what if we start with another guess or another uh, seed? If we start with 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, it's the same thing. Just do the computations and you'll get a periodic sequence. Okay. Now, periodicity is the contrary of randomness. Okay. If we start with 3, we get something uh, even worse because if we start with 3, uh, the sequence will be constant, actually. So if x0 equals 3, x1 will be 3, and x2 will be 3, and so on. So it's very bad. Now, as I was telling you, this is not just specific to this, our, to this choice of specific small numbers. Even if we take larger numbers, the problem is that the, the computer's memory is finite, so it can only store a finite number uh, number of numbers. Okay, so but it could be, it could be very large actually, it could be trillions of trillions. But this is good. Why? Because in practice, suppose that m is of a trillion of trillion. Usually, in practice, when we do stochastic simulations. We don't need to generate more than 1 million or 1 billion random number. So what does this mean? It means that the sequence has no time to repeat itself. OK? So we will, we will get a better simulator of random numbers. OK? But I should mention last remark that the seed is very important. The seed is the starting guess with x0 equal 3. Now, what happens is that if you go back to this uh, random number generator, we said we called x0 the seed. Okay? So if, we, if each time we start the same seed, we will get exactly the same result. Okay? So there's nothing random here. In order to simulate randomness, the seed is changed at each computation. So if we start with, with a seed of x0, next time it will be another seed. Okay, so the next number generated will be different from the first one. Okay, and we shall see this in our practical work later. And this is good, actually, because sometimes we need to check our computation. So we need to start exactly the same seed. Okay. <clears throat> now, the choice of the coefficients is still a research problem, okay? Because I told you that stochastic simulations and Monte Carlo or Monte Carlo simulations are is a big field actually, and we we are just going to scratch the surface. The, we are just we'll be giving just the basics uh, of this field, okay? So. Usually, for example, one good generator is to take m to be very large, 2 to the power 31 minus 1. You compute it. It could be around of, it's of the order of a billion. Uh, we take a to be a, a prime number to the power 5. And c could be taking to be anything, actually. It's not important. 
We will see later in our practical work that this is a very good generator actually. And it will, it will imitate or simulate randomness very well, unlike our bad example. Okay, and this is a standard choice of. Now, why does it work? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a difficult question actually. It works in practice. Okay, so I'm not going to uh, dig into the theory of uh, random number generations because it's still a field of research. Uh, but in, in practice, it gives very good results, and you shall see this in the next video. Okay. So this is what we are going to do next. And now you don't need to worry about the random number generation except in the, in the next video where we, want, we, will, we will be implementing this al algorithm because most, actually all uh, programming languages uh, have a built-in random number generation. For example, MATLAB has the function rand, which, so when you type, when you type rand with two parentheses, you will get a random number between zero and one. Okay, and I gave you an idea, uh, how does it work? Okay, so it's just an iteration, it's a sequence actually. Uh, okay, and yeah, the R language, which is very important for you, you will maybe you'll learn it in other courses this semester. Uh, there is the function R unif, okay, which gives the same thing. So just run it, you don't need to actually to understand the, the, what's happening inside, but you should have an idea of what's happening. Okay, VBA has the, or Excel and Excel is the same thing, uh, have the function RND or RAND. SAS and, yeah, no, uh, sorry, VBA, no, Excel have, has the function RAND. Okay. R-A-N-D. Now in Python, there are at least two ways of generating uh, uniform random numbers between zero and one. We can import the library or the module random. You know that in Python uh, and, and as in other languages, uh, there are libraries or modules. In Python, it's called module. Okay, so it's a collection of functions uh, that come together, that are related together. So when you type random.random, .random, it's not a repetition actually. Okay, <laughs> the first random, the first random is the library random. The second random is a function inside the library, okay? So when we are using random, we are referring to the random function inside the random library, okay? Now, but we'll use it, we'll illustrate the use of it next time. <clears throat> but there is a more powerful uh, library or module called NumPy. So NumPy is a library. And NumPy has a sublibrary called random, and the sublibrary random has a function called uniform. So the function would be to, to generate a uniform random number, you, you type numpy.random.uniform. And we'll illustrate this next time. Don't worry. Now, Python and uh, other uh, languages uh, use actually a more complex and efficient algorithm for generic random numbers, but the, uh, it's called the Mersenne Twister. I suggest that you uh, Google it, uh, but not now, uh, later, once you understood uh, the linear congruential uh, generator that I explained, that you'll implement later. Okay, the, the idea is the same, but the details are more complex. Okay, so it's better to start with our rudimentary or more elementary algorithm. Okay, now why is it more efficient? Uh, the answer is in one book, I found in one book of Doug Punar. Uh, so uh, I recommend that you check it if you want to dig deeper. Why is it faster? Because the function, the number, the function to generate uh, random numbers is written in a lower level language, such as C, because Python is more advanced than C, I mean, in the sense that uh, C, you can say that C is a third generation language, whereas Python is a fourth generation or fifth generation language. <clears throat> it's, um, okay, so, and you know that lower, the more you go, the more, the lower is the level, 
The faster are the computations, actually, because they are performed at the level of bits. And we shall we'll test all this next time. Okay, because efficiency is very important, actually. Uh, it's important to understand the basic uh, algorithms. Uh, but in practice, when you want to do computations, efficiency, and especially in time, so and in memory, of course, is very important. I remember that once, three years ago, one of my students had to do uh, a Monte Carlo simulation for his master thesis in actuarial sciences. And he told me that he, he did that on Excel or something like that. And it took him 28 days to perform the simulation. This is too much, actually. Uh, I think that if he, if he did it in Python, it would have much, been much faster. So time performance and memory are very, are very important, actually. If you, OK. Uh, yeah, so as I told you, uh, once you understood the concept of uh, uh, linear congruential uh, number algorithm, you can search for the, bet the, be the better Merson twister algorithm, if you like. Okay, so just do things in steps. Okay, so let us go step by step. I will talk more about efficiency and time, especially time efficiency later. <clears throat> we shall test everything that I'm, okay. So all these ra random number generators are, have the, are based on the same idea, okay? We start, we start with an initial seed and we construct a sequence inductively by iterating the function f, okay? Now the function f can be complicated, <clears throat> okay? So, the, you remark that actually you, you may tell me well if you start an initial number and iterate this there's nothing random you are right there's nothing random actually because if you start exactly the same from the, the initial uh, value we will we will reach the same thing the same numbers okay we'll see this next time so this is why actually to be precise these random numbers that we are generating are called pseudo-random numbers, okay? They are not really random. And so, but the, but actually they imitate randomness, okay? And uh, for any practical purpose, it will be enough, actually, okay? And, but now there's a big question, actually. Does randomness really exist? It's a big question. Some people doubt, okay? For example, if, what we don't understand, we call it random. What we cannot control, we, we call it random. Okay? At, so, because they appear to behave in a random way. But if you see in this, uh, everything is deterministic. Okay? Because if you start with the same value, you get the same result. Okay? Anyway, this is a difficult question. Uh, so... <clears throat> Now, um, I will uh, stop here because I want to give you some time to organize yourself because I know that you are taking other co online courses. So I want to give you time to install Python, maybe to take uh, a course online. Uh, and next time, we will be implementing the ideas of today, uh, today's video in Python. Actually, not the next time, the next, the, the time after that, because I want to do a quick overview of the possibilities of Python in a short video next time. And after that, we'll be implementing uh, our congruential, linear congruential generator. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, so I will leave you for now and see you next time. Okay, thank you for your attention.